This conference will now be recorded. The floor is yours, Mr. Gilbert. Okay, well, I just want to call a meeting to order, and we'll start with a uh, roll call. Um, is it Christina or Jolene? Jolene. Oh, Jolene, thank you. Um, Trustee Gilbert? Present. Present. Trustee Lee Reader? Present. Aptis? Absolutely. I am, no, uh, I'm here. You're, you're snuck in. Chessie Baines. Baines absent. Barandis. Burns is present. Is here. Thank you. Chessie Burns. Here. Burns present. Chessie Jones. <clears throat> I see her. Present. <laughs> Thank you. Tom. Uh, is Jag on? Not yet. No. Okay. I missed that. Okay. All right. Well, uh, next order of business is approval of the agenda. Anybody have any um, changes or comments? I'll move the agenda. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody Aye. Anybody opposed? Abstentions. None. Okay. Moving on. Um, Chris, you want to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Sure. Okay. Please join me. Pledge of Allegiance Pledge to the flag of the United of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Too. Thank right. you. Thanks, Chris. Okay, item 1.5, 1. 1. any conflicts of interest? Okay, hearing okay, none. none, we'll move on to uh, presentations, which there are none today, um, <clears throat> outside vendors or anyone. Um, public comment, we do have a gentleman, uh, Kevin McRae, um, would like to make a public comment a portion of uh, Mr. McRae's public comments will be covered um, under uh, Gabe's operations manager's report. Gabe's going to give a little presentation today. But Mr. McRae, I, because it's not a formal action agenda item, it's just informational, you can go ahead and make your public comments here. Thank you very much. Can you hear and see me, please? Yes. Thank you. I'm having trouble hearing, but if you can hear me, that's fine. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Michael Kevin McRae. I live on the Garden Highway. I've been here over 25 years since 1954, so that's maybe one way in which I am a stakeholder. I'm in the south approach, so I'm upstream past Powerline Road. Um, I am an Aggie from UC Davis. I have a degree in plant science, specifically in agronomy, and have studied hydrology, for example. I currently work as a tax accountant. I sat on the board of the Natomas Basin Conservancy for over 10 years. I was appointed by the city council, and I have been a close friend of David Christoffel's for a long, long time. Um, on the issue that I'm about to present, I have met with two prior, I'll call them general managers of RD1000, both Jim Clifton and Paul Devereaux, but that may not have been the right approach. Maybe I should have gone to the board. This is my first time having approached the board. Um, and what I propose is the following that you make maybe as a management practice for purposes of maintaining the interior canal so as to serve your mission of flood control, that if possible, you preserve native trees on one side of the canal, such as valley oaks or cottonwoods, ash or elder, as opposed to clearing all vegetation on both sides. And I'm not suggesting that you allow this these perennials to actually grow into the canal, but rather to the side of the canal. And in doing so, what you've done is to allow the creation of forested habitat like used to occur here, and which is, you know, good in and of itself, but also for the animals that depend on it. In other words, here in the valley floor, we've lost something like 95% of the native vegetation. As one of the larger land managers, you can have a real impact on maintaining local native animal populations by preserving the habitat they depend on. Um, I, I know the, the importance of these conveyance structures, that you must keep them free so that come uh, big water events, they serve their purpose. 
I don't, I'm not sure that there's a conflict in doing this. I don't know if you have a policy to the contrary. That's all I have. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. McCray. Any other public comments? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to informational items. Um, general manager's report uh, included in the GM report is a lot of information about the Natomas Levy Improvement Project. Um, one thing to note is that project schedules may be delayed partially um, due to the Corps' inability and SAFCA's inability to find um, suitable borrow material. They're having a really difficult time identifying sources for that material. Um, as of right now, we're still scheduling um, as, as per the core schedule, but um, borrowed material has been pretty scarce and hard to come by. So um, that may push some of the schedules to slip uh, as what's reported in the GM report. Um, other than that, I'll take questions on the GM report. I had a question, uh, Kevin. Are we no longer active um, with CSDA and their ledge? Because um, there's like no, I'm seeing all kinds of bills that would impact us going through them, and we haven't, I haven't seen anything, any alerts or anything on your. So I don't know if we're getting those notices anymore, or if they're just not bills that we are. We still active on that ledge committee? Yeah, um, and we kind of rely on um, Dane Waddle to reach out. Every time that he he feels that you know he wants our support on a bill coming through, he'll send us a note. I think the last one we got was shoot back in June or July mm -hmm. from Dane asking specifically for our endorsement of that. But um, I can certainly include in in future GM reports or you know other actions all of the CSDA ledge action if you'd like to see it. If there's I think you this all is are like well. Yeah, I just was thinking there's something of, of note since we include the safe in there and another, um, but it's, after today it won't it, we won't need to because it will be done today. But that's that's all I have. Thanks. What will be done today? The the session. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. But on future ones, Chris, if you'd like to see that information, it's more I'm more than willing to throw it in here so everybody can see it. Sometimes if there's a call for action, though, it may be a, an action item and not in the GM report, right? So if there's an endorsement letter, um, then we'll do that. Also, some of the policies, if you had a chance to read through them, that we'll talk on item 6.1, um, there is a process for, you know, endorsing and doing, you know, legislative work that's proposed, like CSDA's um, template, obviously, that allows some authority to kind of respond quicker than full board authority. And so, well, you know, that's something to consider down the road. So if there is something that, you know, is is urgent, we can send a letter of support uh, on behalf of the district without waiting for board formal board action like we currently do. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Any other questions on the general manager's report? Okay, hearing none, um, we'll move on to, let me get here, on to operations manager's report. Um, so Gabe uh, put together um, some fantastic pictures in, in this report uh, on some trash cleanup work that we uh, participated in with a group along Garden Highway, uh, did that on a Saturday. Our crews uh, came in and helped pick up trash um, after the, the uh, volunteers gathered it and placed it on the roadway. Um, also, it's kind of a distorted picture because of the way it's formatted, but um, been doing a lot of work on the trash rack, lower guide replacements at plant eight. Um, so really implementing that that uh, increased maintenance level uh, that was approved in the budget uh, for this year. Um, you know, really trying to get after some deferred maintenance. Um, and then lastly, and I'll turn it over to Gabe here in a minute, but we had our aquatic vegetation um, application done. And so Gabe put together a little PowerPoint that I'd like him to um, to share with you all. And so, Gabe? You're on mute, Gabe. Sorry about that. Good morning. Um, yeah, so we had a 
company by the name of Waterworks come out to uh, the district to perform a treatment. Um, it was mainly for Primro. The, uh, it's been quite some time since the district actually got into the water and, and actually made a treatment on the Primro. So it's, it's kind of, or sort of got, uh, got out of control a little bit. So we had, a, we had to have a company come in and kind of help us out. We didn't have the staffing to perform the treatment ourselves. So we uh, treated the main drain from Garden Highway to Interstate 80, Fisherman's Lake, West Drainage Canal, East Drainage Canal, and the North Drainage Canal. Um, the North Drainage Canal being one of the main canals that Thomas Mitchell was having an issue with on uh, vegetation growth. So we uh, made it a point to really put some emphasis on that portion. Uh, so Bar Primrose is a perennial plant that stands erect along the shoreline, but also forms long runners that creep across wet soil or float across the water surface. Um, create uh, poor drainage flows. They basically form a mat uh, that also accumulates sediment. So it's really hard to uh, push water through certain drainage canals if this is present. Um, during pump plant operation, Bar Primrose will form a blanket over the trash rack and screens to prevent water discharge. Um, a lot of our trash racks, when this actually uh, forms a blanket, it'll basically just keep spinning and actually roll into almost like a rug. Um, and it's, we end up having to get an excavator out there and on the back of the blue, it, it becomes quite cumbersome. Um, so yeah, uh, reduction of water criminals uh, facilitate water conveyance as it relates to the operational needs of Natoma's Mutual Water Company. So not only helping us, but helping the water company as well. So this is a picture on the left upper of the, uh, they actually had to use an airboat because the, uh, due to the, the height of the primrose, they couldn't, essentially couldn't get a boat in there. So they used the airboat to uh, facilitate the treatment. Um, it actually worked out pretty good. As you can see in the picture, that primrose is about four feet tall. Um, so even with this treatment, it's not going to completely kill the entire plant, but it's going to reduce reduce the uh, the height of it, and it'll kill portions of it. But it's not obviously four foot tall; it's not going to get everything. But I think with additional treatments, we can facilitate the the, the or reduce the growth. On the right right lower, it's a little little J boat in there. Um, so the small stuff. He was actually uh, he would basically have a spray from the boat. A vehicle will come in, fill its tank when needed. So the herbicide, the mixture that we came up with, we worked with uh, Stephen Burkholder and uh, the gentleman named Chris of Nutrien. It was a glyphosate, uh, MSO, and Weathermaster. Um, the treatment was intended to have a 70% termination rate. Uh, we went out there, we've been out there a few times and did some inspections. It's, it's dying out pretty good. I would expect within the next few weeks we can get a, a, the full effect of the, the treatment and um, see see how it worked out. Um, basically, also I want to uh, mention that we flew over with a drone all of these canals in, um, in, and Fisherman's Lake to do a pre-treatment footage. And I think the next week, week and a half, we're going to fly over again to see uh, post-treatment. Let's kind of see a before and after effect. So hopefully by the next board meeting, we'll have that uh, video footage for you. Yeah, so like I, like I mentioned, we'll gather data. And uh, there's certain things I've seen uh, during the treatment that we can improve on. So we'll, uh, we'll actually take that and, and we'll, see, we'll talk about it with the vendor and see what we can come up with. Mid-October is the next treatment. That will be for Coontail. In order for us to treat coontail, which is a direct water infection, we had to remove the primrose first. We wouldn't be we wouldn't be able to get in the water and do the direct injection the way the primrose worked. So we had to get rid of the primrose first. So hopefully October, mid-October, I'll work with the water company to make sure it works for them, and we'll do a coontail treatment. Uh, coontails, uh, it, it's uh, it's a really submerged submerged perennial lakeweed, often uh, death. It's basically a stringy aquatic weed that gets wrapped up in the screens as well. It's it's probably it's just as bad as primrose, but you can't see it, so it's uh, you don't really see it coming as you start pumping. It's it's not a good weed. Um, yeah, it prevents water discharge as well. So uh, yeah, moving forward, it's essential to perform a 
effective treatments at specific times. That, that's the key right there. We have to make sure we, we, that we treat this weed and the plant at a certain time so it doesn't get out of control, right? And that's what happened the last six to eight months. It just progressively got bigger and bigger and bigger. And before you know, it's gonna suffocate everything and, and cause problems everywhere. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that we uh, move forward. We'll, we'll treat at the right times and, and in the right ways. All right, Gabe, thank you. And uh, just for a reminder, our contract with um, the applicator was roughly $54,000 to do that first treatment? Yes. Yeah, so about $54,000, um, and we worked with them to, to come in and put the boats in and, and treat all those canals. Um, and so we're, we're hopeful, and like Gabe mentioned, he, he has pre and post um, treatment footage We'll get some more post footage once we start seeing the the um, the kill, so to speak, of the aquatic vegetation, and then we'll share that back with the board again um, if you're interested. So um, really great work, and then the fall treatment obviously is important as well to prevent the growth in the spring, and that's kind of what we've inherited uh, the last couple of years is this growing problem, and certainly don't want to see pictures of you know four foot tall primrose again. And so, you know, appreciate the board's um, acknowledgement of, of this issue and increasing the budget this year to, to try to get a handle on this. I know that the community's been asking for this too, so hopefully we can start showing some, some really good results. Any questions for Gabe on the operations manager's report? Yeah, I have some questions. Yeah, Nick. So Gabe, thanks, uh, very thorough report, and I appreciate having the photographs. Uh, it's always helpful to get a visual, uh, certainly, so appreciate that. Some questions on kind of the aquatic vegetation management side of things. Um, I know in the past out in the, uh, the NEM deck, I've, I've seen various uh, aquatic vegetation control methods, including um, spraying and then also actual veg removal. Um, I assume that just physical veg removal is just cost prohibitive just because of the amount of time and the equipment that's needed to do that. Is that, is that a correct assumption? Yeah, that's that is, that is definitely correct. Uh, we, when we can get to a, a lot of stuff that we treated this during this treatment, it was, uh, we couldn't get to it physically with equipment. Um, but the, actually a lot of the places that we could, a lot of the vantage channels that we could physically get to, I mean, meeting with the long range or the, you know, the, the normal size excavator, we would remove it. But this was more or less, we couldn't actually physically reach the aquatics. Um, and if we were to rent a larger excavator, let's say like a 75 foot fit, that would be very, very expensive. So this was the alternative route. So yeah, you're correct. It's just uh, reach, cost, and uh, that was for the most part, that's what it was. That's what it boiled down to. Okay. Yeah, I know out here on the NEM deck, I've seen them certainly with an excavator, but also with a, kind of a big aluminum boat with some sort of paddle device in the front that just kind of, again, uh, pretty significant effort. Um, okay, so kind of going back to Mr. McRae's uh, comments early on, um, you know, certainly from my perspective, you know, um, you know, our agency and the scope uh, of authority that we have and, and our role as a large land manager, certainly been an advocate for a multi-benefit approach. Uh, and certainly uh, his points are well taken. Um, I don't think that it's anything we've talked about uh, recently in terms of um, not only efforts to engage in tree plantings. I know we had talked about that in the in, in the past in terms of identifying um, perhaps target areas where it might make the most sense and wouldn't impede our, you know, O&M activities and, and our core mission of, you know, providing flood control. Um, and in the context also of providing uh, public access to these areas, sort of recognizing the increasingly urban nature of our, of our district. So maybe, uh, Kevin, can you can you comment on that, or maybe it's something that uh, should be uh, brought back up in the operations committee? But uh, I certainly think that it's uh, a worthwhile um, issue to discuss further. Yeah. So um, 
there have been in, in regards to trees um yeah there in the 70s 80s 90s you know i would say a lot of uh, water purveyors um and and conveyance facilities it was kind of scorched earth mentality you know keep it completely weed free tree free you have less maintenance issues with that but obviously um that that opinions changed and we're open to doing some of that stuff nick and we've worked with a few developers on proposed projects about you know landscaping along um the edges of the levee right away um and looking at impacts for that and making sure that um any potential maintenance impacts are covered by a cfd or something um so it's not borne by the district's cost moving forward um, but we certainly recognize the benefit of doing that and if this is something we want to address in operations we can certainly do that nick could tee it up and um maybe look at what we could do if we wanted to do a tree planting program in coordination with tmbc or something like that yeah and i think kind of the timing is appropriate given the fact that we're looking at some sort of a, a potential uh, assessment uh you know sometime in the future that maybe one of those components uh, should be um looking at providing o m funding for uh, maintenance because i agree with you in terms of uh, new development areas but those are less and less so and the opportunities yep. to you know roll into a maintenance cfd o m obligations related to you know maintaining trees along canals and drainage ways i think it's probably pretty finite um but it may be worth a line item in, um, in this proposal to go out with whatever fee proposal we're going to go with to get public reaction uh, to that. But I, th I think there is an opportunity to do that, the scope of which uh, I think it would be appropriate for the operations committee to discuss. But, you know, again, there should be a community dialogue if the community values, you know, investment in uh, what Mr. McRae's uh, setting forth i mean it's just somebody's got to pay for it and so if people are you know engaged and willing to you know consider it then i think it should be uh an item on on the table as it relates to that so um all right that's it thanks all right sounds good thanks nick any other questions for gabe on the operations yeah deborah go ahead all right <clears throat> i just wanted to offer that um when the operations committee considers this perhaps the possibility of a collaboration with the tree foundation um, should be on the table as well okay um, i i don't have this on our our work plan that we discussed for last year i can certainly add it um, into the work plan for this year if that's the pleasure of the board um, and then you know place whatever appropriate priority to doing so um but yeah I'll, I'll certainly add that if that's the pleasure of the board to our work list and um get a operations committee set up you know for initial discussion at least this is chris i i would hope that we look at look at the, the uh, logistics of planting or putting trees and developing a policy before we then start going out and asking because we they've already planted hundreds of trees out there at Fisherman Lake. Some of them actually are in the way of our roads. Um, I, so if you want to go out and look at that, but um, I would rather stop, adopt the policy before we start going and talk to uh, you know the NGOs on uh, having them pay for the trees if that's the case. Um, which brings up the case, um, Gabe. There was a emergency tree trimming and we paid for what, what I, I didn't see any of that. In, in last month's or this month's operations report, what was that emergency tree trimming? Yeah, Chris, we have a tree that was next to the uh, mechanic shop, and during one of the windstorms, we had multiple good-sized limbs come down on the shop and down on a, a few pieces of equipment, break it on the The tree was just, it, it was dead. It was the, it, another big windstorm without the tree. When it came down on the shop, it would destroy the shop. We had, we had to remove it. Um, I didn't want to. I just didn't want to damage the shop and or the equipment that we that we parked near that, that tree. Uh, okay. I didn't want I, to take that chance. Thank you. I just wasn't sure if that was somewhere on the canals. And can we, Kevin? I'm going to push again. There have been two separate fires over by our transformer, and not not less than the, not even 50 feet away from it over there on transformer. So I'm going to keep pushing to get that vegetation cleared around our transformer so we don't 
have potential for fire. So they were underbrush fires created, I'm not sure by who, but um, so I'd like for us to put that as a priority if we can to make sure we don't uh, have problems with our transformer there on plant 1A and B. Right, right here by Boatworks, right? Right behind Boatworks. There's, it's a fire hazard waiting to happen. Yeah, and we'll, um, I know Cablecom was in wanting some access yesterday down there to do some tree trimming work, but um, again, it's this whole whose property is it? But if, if we can certainly go in and, and remove as much vegetation as we can. Last year, we did do a lot of trees um, limbing along Boatworks property on our property line and it was causing damage to their building. And so we trimmed a lot of that back. Um, but yeah, certainly uh, Gabe will put it on his list to, to go investigate. and. Uh, yeah, no, it's the underbrush right behind the transformer where the, the homeless are, are camping. Uh, yeah in the in the raspberries and stuff so uh worry about that get catching fire and impact on the transformer thank you yeah i have had numerous calls with um harris's office council member harris's office um about fires on levees and trying to coordinate you know a, a response they've had a few fires over in american river as well and I, it's, it's literally you know these encampments are they pose a significant risk for fire and flood um and it uh, we're all struggling with it so yeah we'll look at this one specifically chris and and try to get as much of that vegetation out as we can uh chris just uh, fyi i've been working with smud uh, about Sorry. that area they are uh coordinating with them to do we're going to do some removal and then they're also going to do some some removal at the same time so um, I'll, I'll follow up with smud and make sure we get that taken care of Thank you. So can I just add on this discussion at the operations committee on this tree issue? Uh, yeah, I, I agree with Chris. I mean, we need to identify the, the scope and impact of what we're talking about. So I think there needs to be at least an initial discussion that kind of brainstorms uh, what, what this would mean and what next steps would be uh, advisable or not. So just to be clear. Sounds good. And Chris, uh, you are on the operations committee, so that'll will help steer that discussion um, when we schedule that ops meeting. All right, thank you. Um, moving on to item 4.3, uh, general counsel report, Scott. Good morning, all board members. Good to speak with you. Uh, I've had very little uh, activity with the district in the last month uh, did participate in the executive committee meeting and that led to the closed session which is scheduled for today. Uh, Rebecca Smith has been processing uh, some documents on behalf of the district but she was not able to join us this morning. So nothing very significant or noteworthy to report. We look forward to working with you in closed session today. Um, I can add uh, one of the items that Rebecca is working on is um, if, if some of you may remember um, last year there was consideration to take over a portion of Lone Tree Canal and uh, be gifted, not gifted, purchased for a penny or something, um, the property that's being used for mitigation purposes for the, the development out there. Um, so Rebecca and the development attorneys are crafting up some transfer language or something like that when that is finished and when the developer is ready, I'll return to the board for consideration of uh, taking over that property. Okay, um, on to consent calendar. Any items that need to be discussed or pulled from consent? I'll move approval of consent. I'll second. Motion by Abdus, second by Burns. Um, Jillian, would you take roll? Yes, Trustee Gilbert. Yes. Gilbert, aye. Lee Reader. Aye. Lee Reader, aye. Abdus. Aye. Abdus, aye. Baines is absent. Verandas. Verandas, aye. Aye. Verandas, aye. Burns. Aye. Burns, aye. Jones. Aye. Jones, aye. Consent calendar is approved. Thank you, Jolene. Um, on to item 6.1. So um, 
we can spend as much time as you'd like or as little time as you'd like on the policies. But uh, my effort over the last month has been to um, put our language into the draft policies that are before you today. Um, I, inevitably, there are errors in there. I, you know, I've already found a couple. Christina found a couple of like some copy and paste stuff. But I wanted to get this into your hands um, to kind of see if you're comfortable with these policies. So these are pretty much out of CSDA's manual. There are a couple policies in their manual in these two sections that do not apply to us, um, like naming parks and things like that. So I haven't included those because I don't anticipate us doing any or needing that policy in our handbook. Um, so I'd like to, obviously this isn't up for um, adoption today. We, we, we do that at a later meeting when we're ready. So I think that if you guys want to take this and provide comments back to me um, or red lines or anything back to me over the next 30 days or so, um, I'll, I'll put that away. I'll start drafting on this and I'll start working on the other section. Well, I've already started on the two remaining sections, 3000 and 4000, which are personnel and board. And um, in October, I would give you the draft set of sections 3000 and 4000, then potentially compile all of them together in a draft form after receiving your comments in November and then potentially look at a December adoption of the policies. So I still need to, some of these sections add in some of our unique district policies that are you know, only applicable to us. Um, there aren't probably more than a handful of those and finding out what sections they go into. But um, yeah, uh, the policy manual, from CSDA, you can tell that obviously multiple people contributed to creating those documents. So formats different, um, even bullet points and numbering sequences different in some of them. Um, so trying to, I'll put it all into one document and get that all figured, you know, lined up so they all look the same, though they're all the same indents, but copying and pasting was a bit problematic sometimes from their policy into our new document because uh, formats would change and so it was just frustrating going back and forth on some of that and took a little bit longer than expected. Um, but here they are. So I will be happy to entertain any questions on this or, or comments back um, on this set of draft policies. Um, Kevin? Yes. Um, thank you for these. I didn't get a chance to go through every single last one, but I will. Um, these. Uh, it occurs to me that these are mostly administrative type policies. The, you mentioned that you will be adding policies that are specific to us. Would those be more substantive? Because I was hoping at some point you would entertain draft policy making for some of the issues we're struggling with, like um, homeless encampments or you know, a good example this morning was the issue of trees. Would we be including material like that? So, uh, yes, um, we can certainly always add policies to the district's binder when a need arises. Um, I think the initial first effort, um, if we can get basically CSDA's package with some of our existing ones that are unique to us already, if we can get that adopted and then we can identify other policies that we need that we may not even have yet. For instance, the tree policy, and we don't have a policy on homelessness uh, or encampments. So we need to develop those, they're not existing. And then we would find a place in the board policies where they would fit and or maybe even add a new section, you know. Um, but the, the main push here is to get you know, 95% of the policies the district needs updated, um, you know, reviewed and adopted so that um, we're on, you know, really found, you know, sound foundation moving forward. Some of our policies now are, are very archaic and, and significantly outdated. And so that's why, you know, efficiency wise, using the CSDA policy template um, gets us well down that road. But yes, Deborah, we, we would certainly identify those and add them in as the needs arise. So I guess my, my question is more now about process. Um, 
I understand the need to move forward with what we have here, which is more administrative um, business practices sort of thing. But in order to do the substantive policies, is this the appropriate time? Um, and what's the process? Does, does it go to various committees and then to the full board? I mean, what is our policy for creating policy? What is our process? Yeah, so process-wise for this initial go, uh, at least for me, would be to get essentially all the administrative policies like you see today. There's other policies that are the financial policies of the district, the operations policies, um, personnel policies, employee handbook, injury and illness prevention plan. All of those are really packaged nicely right now in the CSDA template. And so the other sections will be forthcoming and then we'll compile all those and um, potentially adopt. But in this same process, if we identify other policies that need to be added, we can add those in as well um, and then how they're developed. And it literally at the pleasure of the board, if you want to you know, assign to certain committees to develop policy or the full board, or you want staff to do that and come back um, you know, if there's certain policies you have in mind, certainly provide those to me and we can start crafting language on policies and then it can be handled either committee or full board. So I'm, I'm open to either one and hadn't put much thought into, um, that process or the process of policy development, um, or the policy on policy development. I hadn't thought about that, um, mainly because, you know, CSD template gets us a long ways down the road, but I'm open to suggestions and at the pleasure of the board. Yeah, Kevin, I um, I think I'd like to see this come through legal committee. I mean, I'm with uh, with Deborah. I um, I've reviewed, but still need more time to sort of digest this. And I think um, briefing at the legal committee with a recommendation coming out of there uh, makes sense in my mind. And so what I'd like to see if, if other people concur with that is that staff make uh, a recommendation to the legal committee and then have an opportunity to discuss in that forum and make a recommendation to the uh, to the board for adoption. OK, um, Nick, if I could add to that real quick, uh, I, is it OK? Because I'd like all of the board to see the policies and maybe get feedback on the next set, the 3,000 and 4,000. So when I come to the legal committee with the full policy manual, um, I'll have some significant edits already done, um, potentially, and then we can really focus in on the work with the legal committee. After that, make a recommendation to the full board on a draft set. Yeah, that's fine. And you know what, I, I don't have to do a and you know a review and discussion. I can just include the next sections in the general manager's report uh, as draft, and you guys can all have that, and we don't have to have a discussion at the board meeting. But just so everybody has the same information. Uh, Kevin. Yes. Uh, I have a question for Scott. Um, on page 110, and I know we'll dive deeper in legal committee, um, but on page 110, policy 2415.4. At the very bottom, it says members of the board or legislative body shall not respond to, like, share, retweet, or otherwise participate in any published postings, yada, yada, yada. And um, I just wanted uh, to Scott to look into this better because, you know, the algorithm for social media um, is highly impacted by how much um, activity is on there. And so sometimes trustees will do that to help bolster our numbers. Um, so I just wanted to pick your brain a little bit on what's the best path forward for us. Thank you. You said 2415.4? Uh, yes, it's at the very bottom. Let me, uh, let me read uh, in my head for a second to get caught up with where you are. Let me see if I can highlight it here. Oh, Dale's on sale. Okay. Okay. 
so I, I my reading of this is is that what they're really focused on here is the issue of serial meetings um and so by way of example let's imagine that um the gentleman who spoke to the board this morning in public comment posted on facebook a proposal that reclamation district 1000 should be planting trees along the house and then uh elena you read the you read it and liked it and you clicked like and then deborah sees your post and clicks like and then chris sees deborah's and clicks like and then nick sees chris's and, and clicks like you now have four members of the board that have expressed publicly a position in favor of something that would come back to the board and that's where it becomes a serial meeting issue because if you look at the what it says in the middle you use any platform to respond to blog or engage in serial meetings or otherwise discuss deliberate or express opinions on an issue within the subject matter jurisdiction of the board which could then create a serial meeting by saying what your position is so my view on this is is if it's something that the board has already taken a position on there's no action before the board your position has already been public then yes it would be appropriate for you to be able to comment or blog or post or like but if it's something that is within the jurisdiction of the board that may come before the board that's where you start running into problems uh, and perhaps another example i can think of is the um, the situation the board dealt with recently with the request uh, in order to have the um, in order to have the um, the city uh, uh, use rd1000 property for a homeless encampment right that issue if it had been on jeff harris's uh, uh, Facebook page, for example, and enough of you weighed in on, it could communicate to the public and it could be a discussion outside of a board meeting. So I would encourage you to think about that phrasing in the context of serial meetings and how to avoid that prohibition of the Brown Act. And I think maybe um, Alita and Scott, this, this um, highlighted any, um, maybe there's some more specific language that could be used there so for instance, we make a post about our crews doing um, you know, a site cleanup, doing really good work on Steelhead Creek or something like that. Um, certainly, um, you know, our crews and others would like to know that the trustees are in favor if they like that or just reshare some of the positive work we're doing. Would that, I don't think that creates a serial meeting, but maybe there's some language where we could define some of that. Absolutely. Um, I think when this goes to legal committee, this would be a great conversation to have a little bit more on uh, under the leadership of the legal committee. And if the trustees are concerned that this comes across as broader than it needs to be, we definitely can narrow it down. Uh, but I, I read this as being very focused on not violating the Brown Act. And I think there are ways we can be more articulate with trustees more comfort. Right, because a lot of our posts actually have like Gabe's bio and and introducing some of the field workers and the field crew, and it's not um, a policy related item. Agreed, and maybe that's the magic language to reference policy related items or items that were not not so much that are what's the phrasing subject matter jurisdiction of the board of the body. Uh, it's more about that it's a policy issue that the body would be asked to opine on. So let's flag that and come back to that, Kevin, when it, it goes through legal committee. Yeah, so Elena, great um, comment and discussion there. Um, and these are the things that, you know, there may be members, uh, board members that read through these policies that are on the legal committee that might pick something up like this, like you did. Um, you fortunately are on the legal committee, but um, this is why I think it's helpful to have everybody have a draft of it, provide comments to me, you know, and I can work them in, and then at the uh, the legal committee, we can address those things and and really dive into some of these details. So I think that process will work really well. Next month, I'll share sections 3,000 and 4,000 with all of you in the general manager's report, and then if you're so inclined, provide you know individually provide comments back to me or um, edits, and then I'll I'll compile all that and take it to the legal committee probably in November with a draft. Um, and it may take a little bit of time that the whole document 
just the CSDA one is 275 pages. So um, I certainly don't want to rush this process at all. There's no urgency to any of this um, in my mind. And you know, the board's number one objective is to set policy for the district. So feel free to take as much time as you'd like in this review. Yes, Jeff. Um, I'm glad to hear that we're not rushing this, but to go back to what I said earlier, there are certain policies and directives that the board should author. And um, some of those are substantive issues that we have been struggling with for a long time. Two examples are uh, vegetation um, and trees, as we discussed this morning. I, I know we have some policies in there regarding maintenance, but homelessness. Um, I would like to see, because um, I'm, you know, I'm not a lawyer, nor do I play one on TV. I've some of my best friends are lawyers. Love you, Nick. But there are some uh, policies that need to be the purview of certain committees. I think the urbanization committee should be the place where a draft homelessness um, po um, policy comes from. Likewise, operations committee should be the one to deal with a tree policy. As appropriate for some of the more substantive issues, I think they should go to committee and committees should um, take on the initial work of drafting the policy for review by the entire board. Um, that's that's just my thoughts. I just I don't want these types of things to get buried under process because we deal with this all the time. I I, I would agree with Deborah. I, I I don't think it's fair for legal committee to shoulder all all this because actually I'd rather approach this like we do the budget because the first half of this document deals with finances. There's portions of social media and community outreach that probably should go to urbanization. There's the emergency preparedness that probably should go to operations um, and and then any of the other legal stuff too. I think legal should look at. Um, that's how I would I would like to approach it because in that way each committee is never said can do a deeper dive into some of these um, specific to their their committee jurisdiction. But I Kevin, like we talked on Sunday, I'd like to see. Uh, if we have that ball, the binder that Christina was putting together on all the board's policies, current policies, that would be very helpful if I can come in and take a look at that and kind of cross match. So I have an idea of where the board was in the past um, and where we might want to go in the future. Yeah, those so could be digitized and shared with the entire board, that would be useful. Kevin, one of the things that I've seen some other boards do is designate one committee as the initial clearinghouse committee, whether it be legal or executive, whichever it is. And then much like a legislative process, which I know a number of your board members are familiar with, <clears throat> that committee can, can um, refer out the various policies to the places where they can best be reviewed. But that way there's there's an initial place that is where they're all looked at and determined the best place for them to then be looked at, as opposed to having to rely on you as staff to do it. I don't know if if the board liked that, you could designate executive committee to do that or legal committee to do it, but I do think there's value in it starting someplace so there is some consistency in process. Uh, this is Tom and I have a couple comments here. Um, Kevin, we we want that binder you were, were referring to that of existing policies that has not been reviewed and we haven't pulled in specific policies that we have to be incorporated in this yet, have we? No. So, okay, so the that, direction that I received from the board um, when we talked about that was in the direction I received was to use CSDA's manual, and so that's been my my work over the last month and a half has been to get CSD manual with our language in it, you know, using their template. The next step would be once this is done is for me to go through our administrative policies that we currently have and see how they overlap. But the direction I did receive was to use a CSDA template and not update our existing policies. So essentially 
utilize all the legal review that's been done by CSDA and the, the peer review that's been done by CSDA with the intention or feeling that CSDA's policies are newest and best um, as compared to our existing policies. But there are specific policies that we do have that we still need to incorporate into CSDA's template. So my process is going to be update CSDA's template, look at our existing policies, where they're not covered in CSDA's template, feed those in right. and add our existing, and then we can craft new language or updated language and have legal review on our old policy so they write it as consistent with today's law, but identify those that are missing from CSDA's template and infuse those two together to come up with a draft policy book for the board to review. Okay, so that that's a critical element, I think, in terms of understanding is, is that, you know, we're taking CSDAs and updating it for our structure, and then we're going to map from our existing policies into where it either is in the CSDA template or where it should be, and we would put it in there. So that we know that our existing adopted board policies have been included in our uh, updated manual. And that process will take place before the final draft comes out to the full board for consideration. That's Is right. That okay, That's so, correct. so we're not really approving anything other than the process right now. And to the extent when that goes out to the full board, if a committee member picks out something that they think should be considered at urbanization, they can bring that up. And then if, if it needs to be addressed before we issue the report the final we'll do that but if it if it's something that can be given some thought and consideration over a period of time it will be just assigned out to that committee to come back with a recommended change so and that would be after we've adopted the um, draft with the incorporation of our existing policies and i you know from a timeline standpoint if, if we could accomplish this by the uh, first quarter of next year, I think that would be huge. Yeah, um, and I, I think, Tom, that you may be onto something there is if I compile the whole thing together and then if there's certain policies that need further development and want to be referred to a committee, maybe that's the best way because I, I won't be able to identify which each individual trustee would like to review further in depth at a certain committee. Um, right. You know, no, I'd, just be, I'd just be guessing. Yeah, and, and that, right, let, let the uh, individual board members pick that out or committee chairs, but let's just get it up on the wall with what we current, with our current policies, with the framework of the CSDA manual. Just to make myself clear, I'm gonna try one more time. I'm not suggesting that we not do everything as outlined by Tom and Kevin. There are, however, other policies that we do not have Agreed. that may take some time to work on that we could be considering while we move forward with the draft that we're going to approve. Why do we need to wait until that initial book is put together before we start thinking about how we deal with homeless encampments? We, when we deal with this at the board, we don't have a policy we can fall back on. That's why we critically need this, so that we can say, in accordance with state law and RD1000 policy, dot, dot, dot. So that's what I'm suggesting. I'm suggesting this morning, for example, my committee, the committee I'm on, um, with the chair, with the chair of the committee's permission, could start thinking about drafting a district policy for dealing with the unhoused on our property. That is something we consistently come up against. I'm sure my colleagues can think of other things we consistently come up against that we need to address. And we can do that concurrently with putting together our book of administrative policies. Yeah, that, that's Elsewhere. clear, Deborah. And if there's other policies today that you would like to see in the draft of the CSDA manual. Um, so 
we're taking CSDA manual, existing policies, and if there's new policies that are identified today, such as your suggestion on um, homelessness, and you want to refer that to urbanization committee, I'll certainly set up a committee meeting to develop that policy. Um, and you know, as that policy is being developed, and until it's developed, you know, include it in the the policy manual, which is not something that we currently have. Um, as well as a tree policy, I can definitely start on urbanization or excuse me, operations committee on the veg management and tree policy. And so if there, if you've already identified policies that we don't have that we need in here, we'll definitely add that to the list. I'm not opposed to doing that. Um, I just, I process wise initially was given direction, use a CSDA manual that'll get us most of the way there. And we hadn't talked about development of new policy that wasn't existing. We talked about CSDA merging in our existing policies, but not new policy development. And I have another one. If we're if we're on this list, we need to talk to um, whichever committee, but we need to develop a levy setback policy. And so um, that's long been in the works. You know, prior to me getting here, um, that had been talked about. And so that's definitely on the list to incorporate. So we can do them concurrently. Absolutely, can do that. Um, so I'll set up an urbanization committee uh, to discuss that um, policy development and also set up an operations for the tree one and not sure which committee would like to take up setback policy but certainly open to doing that whatever the board wants uh, I'm happy to do so could, could, could we get this in a separate it would be helpful to be in a separate document than having to, to keep going into the board packet and and if that's possible because i've got a lot of, i have some corrections for you that i'll give you personally i can uh, but yeah that'd be very helpful yeah the more eyes and comments on this the better i mean <laughs> going through the out of 75 pages or something already you just kind of get yeah i don't know you get kind of tired looking at the same stuff over and over so fresh set of eyes is always helpful willing to obviously collaborate these are your policies not mine I would just add to the discussion that it seems like on the administrative policies that that should be on a separate track. All the you know subject matter specific policies that were discussed seems like those are different animals and should be separated from that. You know more. I mean, we need administrative policies. Those need to be updated, and I think we all agree with that. That should move forward. Some of these other policies are not going to move. I think at the same. Uh, same pace or trajectory you know obviously some are more controversial than others uh, and so each one of those should be I think treated as standalone in my opinion I, I just think otherwise uh, you know we're gonna drag down adoption of these administrative policies which again pretty mundane banal stuff but need to be in the uh, in our you know in our policy manual as adopted policies so uh, those are my two cents thank you Nick All right, are we policy out, policied out? <laughs> this was a, an information item, correct? Yeah, it's just for review and discussion, no action necessary. I wanted to get it in your hands. And I actually um, thank you for the feedback and comments on the process. Um, I think I have a, a clear, clearer path on how we want to proceed forward. And like I mentioned, um, this is, you know, these are, these are your policies uh, for the district. Um, and I'm not pushing any urgency on this matter so we can take as long as we need um, to do it. There are risks in going longer just in that some of our policies may be outdated and not consistent with law, but um, the effort would be, you know, acknowledge that there's still some floating risk, but we're okay for now. Um, and then hopefully, as Tom mentioned, maybe we'll target, you know, Q1 of 2022. But um, yeah, take as long as you guys need on this and I'm here to, to walk through that process with you. Thanks, Kevin. All right, um, on to item 6.1, I'm sorry, I should ask, is there any public comment on item 6.1? All right, hearing none. On the 6.2, um, I had sent out an email um, to all of you individually asking if anyone was interested to be nominated for um sacramento lafco for the uh, there's three offices open the special district commissioner and 
two alternate special district commissioners. Um, if anyone wants to be nominated to serve on that board, um, I just place it as an action item because that has to have formal board action um, to nominate from the the full board or majority of the board um, to nominate someone. So I know Tom Brandis got back to me. He said he was definitely not interested. So uh, any other trustees running for um, Sacramento uh, Lafka? All right, we can nominate Jag since he's not here. <laughs> Where's unanimous? Give, give him something else. Maybe that'll be more fun than his school board meetings have been lately. Yeah, oh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> we, won't, we won't do that to him. I don't know if you've been tracking the Thomas school board stuff, but Jag's, Jag's got some interesting stuff going on over there. All right, so hearing no nominations, um, this item is just tabled, not even tabled, just no action taken. So um, on to committee reports. Any questions on the committee reports from August 10th through September 1st? Deborah, I had to get creative on how to figure out that language to make it right, but I think I figured something out. I just wanted a clarification on the, the, the my request for a closed session. I, I, maybe it wasn't my request was to have like legal determine whether we needed a closed session. Not that I specifically asked for one. Oh, I, I wanted so. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, we talked about that at executive and we agreed that a closed session is appropriate today. And so I have a brief report to make to you and I believe executive committee has a recommendation for board consideration. But I appreciate you bringing it up, Chris. All right, so at this time, um, I'm going to ask all, we'll go into closed session. And so I figured out a way with GoToMeeting to do this. So anyone um, not on the board and not legal counsel, I'll ask that you go ahead and leave the meeting now and give it about five minutes and then you can join back in and you'll be placed in a waiting room um, so that when the board's done in uh, closed session, the Scott will allow you back into the meeting to finish up for adjournment of the meeting. So I'm gonna stay on to make sure Scott's set up until um, everyone else logs off. I'll make him the organizer, lock the meeting, and then everyone else can wait in the waiting room. Give it about five minutes um, in case there's any tech technical difficulties, but you can come back in. Thank you, Kevin. And don't forget to stop the recording. I will stop the recording, yep. Okay. This conference will now be recorded. Excellent. Um, so we're back in open session. Uh, the board met in closed session and is referring to the personnel committee uh, to uh, offer a, an extended contract of three years to the general manager uh, and for the personnel committee to negotiate that with the general manager and bring back a final agreement to the board for consideration and that's the report out of the closed session okay um those uh negotiated sessions uh scott with um personnel committee are those public meetings or um private because it's negotiating a, a public contract uh, it's it's just like a regular board meeting the meeting is open but the discussion on the terms is closed okay and then the I just board to know how to calendar that so yep and then the board will make the final decision in an open session and does the personnel committee have direction or will i get direction from you to make any draft changes or any of that or you'll share with me if there's something that i'm supposed to prepare for the personnel committee uh, I think the personnel committee will need to meet in closed session to decide amongst themselves whether there are changed terms being okay. proposed. It would All be right. helpful, Kevin, if you could provide uh, the, a copy of the executed contract to all board members, so they could have it. And if the personnel committee, which uh, is chaired by Deborah, is interested uh, in having me participate in that call, then you can let me know or through Kevin, Deborah, uh, and I, we can schedule it around my availability as well. Just so the, the board and the public are aware, the 
it's not um, permissible for Kevin to sit in the negotiation. Uh, that that has to Kevin's involvement occurs separate from the closed session. Uh, so there, it's often the case that either the chair of the committee or the attorney will go back and forth between the committee and the the general manager or the employee if there are any issues to be resolved there. Okay, sounds good. So um, Deborah, as chair of the, the committee, is there any flavor you want to add to any of that or any direction you want to provide at this time? Okay. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Thank you, Scott. So Kevin, I think the goal would be to have all of that happen so that the board would be in a position to, to take an action at the next meeting. Okay. Well, Deborah, I'll work with you to set up a personnel committee meeting in the next week or two. Um, I know your, your availability is on Teams, but if there's anything not in there, um, you and I will work together just to get that meeting scheduled. And would you like Scott to participate in that? Uh, sure, why not? Okay. All right, thank you, I appreciate that. Um, and so if there's nothing else to report from closed session, um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved by Jones, second by Abdus. Um, all in favor, we could just raise our hands and say goodbye. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thank <clears throat>